Ed here from Clicks Geek, back with another Google Ads Agency Roundtable with Dustin and Mark. And prior to coming on 15 seconds ago, Mark said that's what she said. That's why we're all laughing. Um, all right. So um, <laughs> this, this episode, we're going to talk about match types, um, the storied history of match types and um, exact phrase, broad, what they all mean. And then more specifically, what they mean to you actually operating a campaign. So, Dustin, you are the most technical amongst us. Oh, Lord. Oh, yeah. Give us your definitions of what match types are and what they, like some examples. I mean, you've got, obviously, exact phrase and broad match. <clears throat> they used to be a broadified, um, broadified, modified broad match. I like that. My broadify was better, actually. I like broadify. that. Yeah, I know. That's that's something I we, we have a secret here. But they used to be modified broad, which is, like, really great for grabbing um, specific keywords that had a lot of different variations. So, really, what's happened is Google has said exact match is when somebody types in your exact keywords that you want to show an ad for. This is what it should – this is what they – used to define it as, we'll start there. Um, and they had to be only those words in your keyword in the exact order that you provided without any additional words or any additional uh, jumbling them around. And then phrase match was that same idea, but you could have words before or after your keyword, right? So let's say your phrase was garage repair, then you could have, you know, garage repair Chicago or, you know, best yes. garage repair and that, that keyword would show. And then broad match has always been what like what's the third cousin of this keyword? We'll show an ad for that, right? So we were always really focused on exact and phrase match keywords and the broad modified at the time. Um, but now exact is more like Let, could, go back one sec to, to the broad right. match just to give yeah. like scope, like to, so, total ends of the spectrum. Garage door, exact phrase yeah. would be best garage door or garage door service. Yeah, broad could literally be how do I open my garage door to stuff a body in there? Like yeah, it literally could be remotes. anything and anything yeah. in there. Garage um, remote controls. Uh, it could be driveway. It could be driveway. It could be driveway. You're right because it's loosely related to it. It's uh, it really is all over the map. So when you're thinking broad match to the newer people out there, you got to be really, 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 really careful, and think of exact as your sniper rifle uh, phrase is your machine gun and uh broad is google's unmonetizable traffic and think of, that, <laughs> think of that as a grenade or literally just firebombing the entire city because there might be one bad guy in there so just be careful with it yeah right, and then, off, man, go back yeah so um we'll talk about the the google recommendation for broad too but after we finish this but now so what's happening now though is exact matches become a lot more liberal meaning that it operates a lot like phrase match used to. And now you can have words that aren't even included in your exact match keyword showing your ads. You could have additional words. You could have totally wrong words. They can drop words out of your phrase, uh, out of that keyword. And phrase match operates a lot like that. But we're noticing these days, like as in the last several months, that it's operating more like that grenade, that broad match. So it's kind of like sometimes it can work well and sometimes it works really poorly. And some of the reasons we I guess we're talking to this, talk about this a little more in, in a minute, but like when that happens more often than other times and what kind of things we're seeing. Um, but I think the key, I guess, warning or thing to consider, I've heard some other agencies try this and we've seen it sometimes work. We don't do it very often, which is broad match plus smart bidding. And Google is pushing this down a lot of agencies and even you know, if you run your own account, probably down your throat, it's like use broad match and smart bidding and this and that now. It could work. I'd say it might be worth testing, but only if you're going after volume. If you can get the leads and the sales you want with exact and phrase or just exact, then just use that. And then if you want to grow and scale, or maybe you want to try a lower CPA, if you think it will work, then doing a test like that could work. But don't test in your main campaign. Create a new yes. campaign for that. Test it there and negative your exact and phrase match keywords against that campaign. So you don't cannibalize the traffic. So that's the, I guess, a bit of a tip for that. I like it. So also you said cannibalize, just a layer in one other thing. Um, I mentioned the term unmonetizable traffic. It's it's a, the amount of traffic Google has is mind-blowing. And the amount that they can't monetize is mind-blowing. And that's kind of what's in that broad match area. 
So um, that's why broad is so cheap. That's why the clicks are so cheap. The, the money is bottom of the funnel, the exact in the phrase. Um, what you'll see is um, something we've talked about with optimizations before. Um, you have a campaign that was run or a client's campaign that was running. We build a new campaign. They're like, well, I'm getting way less impressions and my click costs are a lot higher. What's going on? It's because they were going after broad match traffic before so much more of it. So Dustin, speak to um, speak to cannibalizing it, but also the idea of it like Given the option, Google will flood you with broad match traffic over phrase and exact because there's just 80, 20 of it. There's just way more of it. Can you talk to like why you really want to separate them into an exact and phrase campaign and then a broad campaign just from a logistics and then also a strategic standpoint? Yeah, I mean, I think that a good PPC person typically, like one of the things you want to focus on is structure and structure is a lot of times segmenting. And what do you segment? You segment good from bad. You segment High quality from low quality. That if you had to figure out what, which I create a campaign for this or not, think of it that way. Like if all your budget had to be divided, would you want to divide it evenly? Well, no, I want these more of these keywords than those. Okay, well then separate it in its own campaign, its own budget. So the reason why I said cannibalize is because if you add a, if you say you copy your exact phrase keywords and now you, I'm sorry, you add broad match into them or you convert them into broad match. Google is going to start showing all that junk traffic for the most, probably more than likely. So you have a lot of good conversion data and you're lucky. That's what's going to happen. So now all that good performance you had when you started the test is going to be either gone, skewed, it's going to be done away with. So what we suggest would be creating a new campaign. So replicate that campaign, change all those keywords in the new campaign to broad match, take the keywords that are exact in phrase, add them as negative keywords to that broad match. And now you're telling Google, Hey, these good keywords we have, we want them to show in this campaign with a bigger budget with where we know it works, it's our control. And then this broad campaign that we just created as a copy now gets its own budget, probably lower. It's going to have its own set of data because the other part of segmenting is being able to tell if it's working. If you mix your broad keywords in your old campaign, you have no way to know whether it works unless you go into your search terms, you look at those a broad match search, but then that still also could apply to an exact match keyword sometimes. So there's some, there's some like to get to the bottom of, hey, is this working? Is way harder when it's all in one campaign and just another keyword. Yep. And, and if you're using if you're using a campaign level bid strategy, you're going to um, be paying like let's say you're doing target CPA, um, and you wanted to get a hundred dollar lead at the phrase and exact, you should be able to get a way lower cost per lead with the broad stuff, but it's going to be mixed and the results won't be great. So that's awesome. Um, yeah. Mark, Can I give you let some examples. examples. Yeah, uh, please. Here's an example from a, a review I did of a of an account yesterday. Not a full blown audit, didn't have to. So here's the broad match keyword, financial advisor. The search term that triggered that ad was accountants near me. The same hmm. keyword, financial advisor. The ad was triggered by Dave Ramsey, mortgage advice. Oh my gosh. So that's what you're getting. Now, there, are there some closer? Yes, but they're all your competitors. Another one was a financial advisor, broad match keyword. The search, the ad was triggered by the term fiduciary. I can't say it. Fiduciary. Fiduciary. Yeah. Fiduciary. So you have the, for, for those who aren't quote unquote professionals at this, you have the additional problem that we're dealing with very intent based keywords because we know to use them. The average person doesn't know to use them. They think financial advisor is a good search term at broad, and then they get total crap in terms yeah. of their search I get, terms. I, get, I hear from people that'll say, oh, I can use broad if I beef up and have a really good negative list. The issue with that, that I have with that is you can't outrun. You have to you buy that negative Google list. search line. Keyword it's by impossible. keyword, click by click. It's Yeah, exactly. It's insane. So I'm... Um, yeah, I'm torn on it, man, because we've had one client that absolutely crushes with broad campaign. But um, but it's an old campaign, though. It's an old campaign. It started three years ago, been running for a while. Um, but he's also, he's got excellent sales skills on his team. They're closing one out of six leads into a deal, like legit, legit closers. Anyone else I've tried it with, um, maybe one out of five. We do it, like Dustin said, as a supplemental campaign. We quarantine some mm -hmm. risk. And we try it and maybe one out of five, it works really well for, but the other ones just aren't converting and the traffic's rough. Um, yeah. So we use my them favorite, on purpose sometimes. 
Yeah. If you can't get search volume or you're having problems with a niche, you can use that very carefully. Kind of okay. like, you know, you use dynamite, you know, you use it very carefully. Yep. Um, I, I seriously think they need to rename the match types because they're irrelevant at this point. Yeah, they, they, um, and guys, this shift has happened recently where exact was always exact and then phrase was phrase and broad was broad. But um, phrase has become um, more like broad and exact has become more like phrase and just getting looser and looser. Um, what I've said this before on, on our roundtables. I'm going to say it again for those that haven't heard this, but my favorite example of broad match traffic ever that I've ever seen on a campaign ever was a painter in Los Angeles, and the uh, search term came in as, um, I want to hire a painter to tie me up and paint me naked. And um, this was- That was me. Actually. Yeah, that was you. It was for a, it was for just a house painter. This guy was looking <laughs> for looking for exterior paint jobs, and that lead came in. So- um, Did he take it? Did he do the job? Uh, he should have. I don't know. But, that might be a niche market. We haven't- <laughs> uh, I'm sure there's a market for it, but- that's the that's the risk with Google. Um, you can't outrun. Um, you cannot run bad. There's well, just way more of it. I had a prospective client. I'm going to use that term. I did a call with yesterday, and this pers- prospective client was insistent that everything be totally zoned in, and he wastes no money. And I simply explained. It's kind of like the speaking of memes. It's like the uh, you don't simply walk into Mordor. It's the same way with Google Ads. You don't <laughs> simply walk into Google Ads. Expect that's literally not how it works. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Even yeah, if you especially know with, what you're doing, it doesn't work like that. Yeah. If you don't know what you're doing, it's even you worse. might as well just write a check. I think yeah. the worst part, though, is keep in mind, like, especially for people watching this that might be running their own stuff, like, Google is telling you to do this. Like, this is not like, hmm, let me think about, like, Google is saying, use broad match, do this, get rid of redundant keywords, that auto, you know, let's auto apply recommendations. It, it's a total, it's a total, like, it's not good. Let's just put it that way. Can I ask a question, Ed, that came to mind? Yeah, go for it, man. So, From your perspective, what can you name as the positive changes that Google has made in the last 12 to 24 months? Well, they made us a Google Premier Partner again. (laughs) Okay, (laughs) so they got that going for us. Um, Positive change. Um, We have one client running Performance Max on e-commerce that's going really well. Um, it's, they're probably just stealing your your branded search terms. Yeah, outside of that, I don't know, man. I I'm uh I'm above I'm of the belief that um you wanna um there, there's a big disparity between me and me and you and the client thinking of budget and being efficient with budget and a Google per, a rep thinking of your money as revenue and commissions and bonuses. So um, just being really protective of that. Um, any changes I've seen over the years seem to benefit Google and not necessarily the customer. Again, examples would be, um, um, I mean, a couple, shoot. Uh, we, had, we had max conversions on without a bid, uh, bid cap one point, and they were doing $100 clicks in the limo market, which limo rides are $100, let alone How a single get click. a $100 click. No yeah. one's bidding a hundred dollars. Yeah, and, and the guy's telling me that that's where the market's at, and I'm like, "Come on, man! We've been in this campaign for three years. Like, I made a mistake here. Can you at least just do the right thing?" And um, wasn't having it. And then other times, like, I, I, the biggest one I noticed was when they took away average position because average position used to be a lever in which we could bid upon. Like they used to say that it wasn't really what it was, and that it was you should use search impression share to kind of guide it, but. I think search impression share kind of gets skewed when you use some of the AI bid strategies that it's not as important as average position used to be when you run it manual. Um, so this is my current list of the improvements you mentioned. Oh, gosh. You were just waiting <laughs> for me to set you up. Oh, Lord. Okay. Yeah, I just uh, I wrote them all down here. All Got the it. improvements are right here. Um, I don't know. Dustin, what have you seen that's been an improvement 
to the NFL? Um, I don't know if this happened in the last 12 months, but being able <laughs> so dumb, being able to be added to multi, more than 20 accounts personally was a great thing. Yeah. Oh, I'm uh, sorry. You can only be added to one, and now you can be added to. I, I don't. I haven't hit a limit yet, but it's yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll throw out there one thing. Um, I, I I talk shit now. Mark and Dustin don't often talk shit, but I'll talk shit about Google and Google Ads and um, the difficulty on the platform. But however, I will say this: um, if done correctly, there is no other platform like it that could literally change someone's life and drive a an absurd amount of business to them and double, triple, quadruple, ten x the size of their business. There's nothing else like it. In the market where um, intent intent means service and the demand meets service, it's a beautiful thing. Um, when done correctly, when put in the hands of professionals that can be efficient with clients' budgets, um, left to their own devices, it, it could get real hairy real quick. But um, for all the shit that I talk, I still do believe in it as a product, and I believe it has the ability to change people's lives for the better. I mean, it also could change people's lives for the negative if it's not controlled properly, but We've got a ton of case studies. I know you guys both have case studies where it's changed people's lives. It's added employees. It's added trucks. It's added different divisions. So for all the smack that I do talk about it, I do love it as a platform. There's nothing else like it because um, the intent behind Google is so powerful. And just slipping your service, or your product in front of people's desires is, is really powerful. So I just wanted to throw that in because I'm always talking smack about it. Well, you're not wrong. It's the best thing out there. It's yep. just... It- I'm curious as to why they continue to make it what I've never seen a product product that continues to make itself from our perspective worse with every upgrade. I would imagine it's market share, like their market share has slipped over the last 20 years. Um, You know, it's not, it's not what it was. It's not the dominant position that it was. Um, So I would imagine that's probably playing into it. Yeah. But what I really want answered is how much money has, optimization score and auto apply recommendations. I want to know specifically, number one, who created that at Google? Because that person's a genius. Mm-hmm. And number two, how much that product is responsible for revenue wise? I, I think it's probably in the billions. Well, many billions, I would imagine. Well, how about the new one they're working on, which I hear is automatically creating ads and things like that. I mm. uh, just read about that one. Nice. Um, and it's probably optional, but you probably have to click through six levels to find yeah. the uh, thing that says turn it off. Mm-hmm. Uh, so expect to see that. I heard there's a new interface where it's being tested. Oh, yeah. Not yet. Don't want that. I mean, I think a couple of things that on the positive note, like data-driven attribution, which I think is could be helpful in some ways because now you get to see like more important steps in a path. Now, if we're talking about emergency services, that ain't gonna really do much for you, right? Or really right. short, really short lead. Like if you're doing lead gen, it's like one click, one conversion, or two clicks, one conversion. You're probably not gonna learn a lot, but from the e-commerce side, um, that could be helpful for longer sales cycles. I mean, I think that's been helpful enhanced conversions, which we haven't really implemented for everybody yet. Um, but that's gonna be something that's gonna be helpful with when you don't have the tracking available from from cookies. So, I mean, there's those things that have been helpful, and I think honestly, like. Just having a little bit more um, a reason to be there because unfortunately, like people are going to be in a situation where even if they knew Google Ads before and they run it for themselves, they don't know it now. And I mean, even us as agencies, we're always having to change. Like right now, we're, we're going back to something that we did. We stopped doing four years ago, probably, which was campaigns by match type. And I don't mean the broad thing we talked about. I'm talking about exactly the phrase match campaigns again because going into well, how this is affecting us lately, uh, we're just seeing phrase match keywords end up or ad groups. Or, you know, we, we do break them out into ad groups right now. We stopped doing campaigns because you split your budget too thin sometimes, but um, we're seeing that they cause the most problems with conversion because you're still getting a bunch of that junk. Um, exact match is still not perfect, but we're even going deeper than that. Like for on the local side, as most people here are probably watching are like, look, like local like search terms that don't contain a near me or a city or a location, I should say, are typically the worst performers as far as conversions go. You know, it's like, well, what if somebody just searches for a roofer, you know, roofing company? It's like, yeah, now you're going to get Joe Blow Roofing Company. You're going to get 
John Deere roofing company. You're going to get, I hate this roofing company. You're going to get all kinds of crap traffic that you were not intending because of that. And, it's, and I'm not saying it won't be a problem necessarily in these other scenarios, just that they're less of an issue. Um, and then also on top of that, which is something we talked about, which is like, when do these issues show up the most? Like I find, to, at least in our case, I find exact match to be the least exact match when you're dealing with low traffic terms. Like a lot of times, like high-end B2B stuff that just doesn't have a lot of traffic volume. So you're trying to get all of it. And Google's like, well, I'm going to try to help you spend that money. Even if you're using manual bidding, it doesn't have to be smart bidding. Um, you'll find that they'll like be very, very uh, liberal with your terms. I mean, there's a lot of traffic available. I find that they're a lot more closer to your target. I'm not saying this is always the case, but I just feel like it's like anything. There's a lot of it available. They don't need to really go outside the box too much to get you what you're looking for. But when there's really not a lot of search volume around your keywords, I feel like they're a little bit more liberal because they just want something to happen. And they also match keywords or search terms in the wrong ad groups. Like, hey, I have an ad group for this, but they're showing it over here, right? Now, again, if you try to negative those keywords in that ad group, if you don't have enough traffic for it, you're going to be losing all of it. You start to lose, lose all your impressions. Why? Because I don't know. It just happens that way. But, you know, so you like there's a lot of, I think, skill that's going to be learned just by the last like six months of this happening as an agency, not even as a business owner. To just stay in front of like how do we how do we execute especially for new people that don't have an account that don't have data in a way that's gonna get them the best results out of the gate and then instead of like testing a lot and then spending a lot in the beginning maybe we test like you just go out with like, the really exact stuff and then grow it over time which is basically gonna be the approach we're gonna take this year unless somebody's got a big budget proven account a lot of data you know like they've they've got something to show but most people don't have budgets that they want to just blow and test and if they do they get mad at you for it because it's like well you know we want you can pay us three three months to learn this we can learn it in one month it's up to you but you're going to pay us three times as much for the same learning ultimately yep um some niches we're starting out with just exact in the campaigns because phrase yeah. is brutal lately we're um, doing a lot of exact dustin i think both of you mentioned that a couple weeks ago some of it's just, it's insane. I mean, phrase has always been an issue with competitor names within the trades and doctors as well. Because mm-hmm. um, you figure you got proctologist in Cary, North Carolina, then the phrase is going to be basically list of every single proctologist in Cary, North Carolina. That's how you find your competitors. Yeah. Yeah. So we try to preemptively layer in competitor names, but that's another thing where you're never going to outpace the amount of search right. for a phrase match and it gets messy. Um, something to think about from an optimization standpoint with with uh, match types is uh, not all conversions are created equal. So you look at a campaign, it's got 10 conversions, but if you look at it and there are 10 phrase match conversions, and then you look and it's eight customer or eight uh, competitor phrase match conversions, that's those aren't wins. Those are, those are um, typically shitty leads because they're trying to call um, Davis Plumbing, not Stapleton Plumbing. And uh, it's it's a message to market mismatch. While a lead was generated and someone, yes, was looking for a plumbing company, they're looking for Davis Plumbing. And that is not a lead. From Conversions a, aren't leads. That's my yeah. mantra. That's right. Conversions so, are tracking the triggering of an, of an action. Yep. Uh, so that's why we're going into what converts marketing, uh, marketing things as... Uh, yeah, actually, Mark, Mark, go through that. You're... Out of all of us that are on this roundtable, I think you're the only one that actually does this. Walk through what you do after a lead comes out. Okay, so when a lead comes in, typically what we would have done is said, if a lead, if a conversion occurs, either a phone call from an ad, a call from a landing page that triggered our uh, call tracking, or a form fill, that was a conversion inside of Google. Yep. So now we have a slight delay because we have someone go in once a week and review in what converts the tool that we use. All the leads, all the quote unquote leads that were generated, all the conversions that were generated, and then they mark them as quotable or not quotable. The way what converts works is you have the option of uh, what feeds back into Google as a lead, or as a conversion. So if it's not a quotable lead, it's not a conversion inside of Google. So that reduces your conversions, but it also means that those six crap calls you got on uh, calls from ads, for example, or those six crap calls you got that wanted to go Joe the roofer instead of Jim the roofer, 
are now not conversions and you don't have your experts on your team happily saying, hey, I got you 12 conversions last week. When let in me, fact, let, you me got in a, let me layer in a problem there that I have that I'd like your input on how you handle it. So we've been having to go in and layer in employment and Spanish exclusions in the markets lately because the amount of people calling in for jobs has been off the charts. I know like, how to solve that one too. Historically, yeah. So hit that one after. So historically, the worst we've seen. Um, so what happens when a lead for a job or a lead for whatever comes in from a good keyword? So like, let's say it's um, best roofer in Indianapolis, and that's a good keyword that's historically done well for you. Are you not adding that conversion in, even though we know that this historically is a good keyword for us? If we can tell from the call transcript or the form that it was a job as opposed to someone wanting business, we don't mark that as a as a qualified. Are you lead. afraid that that's going to negatively impact that particular keyword or ad group moving forward for the campaign itself? Well, it could. But if that keyword or ad group is generating job queries, then which side do you come down on? Now, the other that's thing is that's where I'm st- I'm stuck because like. It, if it historically, the job ones will just come in. Someone will just be like, I'm looking to work for a roofing contractor in Indianapolis. And and they'll come in from any of the keywords. It's not like they're doing Trabajando uh, Roofing Company Indianapolis. It's, right. you know, that's well, where I- We that's don't the, see many of them, but if you turn off your search partners, you'll see less of them. Yeah. Yeah. Which we did is, that and then, and then uh, we layered in employment exclusions and then we layer in Spanish exclusions as well. Of course, we- do negative keywords around all those things, but people are going to get around that. You're going to have a certain percentage. And we do have some, you know, we have cases where we can't have call transcripts because of the legal ramifications or the client doesn't want trans call transcripts. Then we just say if it was more than a minute, or if you don't answer your phone, that's a lead to us. I'm not taking a hit because you don't answer your phone. Yep. Well, I'll never know, but I'm counting that as a lead. Yep. Um, so there's some gray area there. But I got tired of, quite frankly, I shouldn't say this out loud, but I got tired of experts telling me all the time, we got 14 conversions last week. I'm like, no, you didn't. Conversions aren't leads. That You're tracking the triggering of an event. You had 14 events. One of the ways we've actually handled this as well, um, kind of like what you're doing, Mark, uh, we, we import both, but we don't count the raw leads, as we call them, as a primary conversion. conversion. That way, you can still see that data. Google won't optimize for it, but sometimes it's a big eye opener to tell like, all right, we got 20 raw conversions and only four were good. If you don't have the 20, you don't really know the discrepancy. How do you differentiate the two? Because of different conversion actions. Well, what conversion actions are, well, like- You I'm create one for qualified, you create one for let's say raw leads or whatever, and you count the raw leads as a secondary. How do you qualify? What's that? How do you qualify? How how is what you're talking about in a CRM? They they offline import them back into the system. Okay. Yeah, because so like the, the raw leads would just come in automatically like without any without any disposition, but you're going to feed back the qualified ones based on a CRM, or you could try it with a Google Sheet, but CRM is better. And then you just feed that back in whenever somebody updates the status for us. Too. We've done this with HubSpot. I can see where it's at a secondary. high level. It could be useful. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's the same idea. The point is that I don't want to not see all the data because I'm a nerd, but I also want Google optimizing for it because we've found that like, especially like in the um, wholesaling, real estate wholesaling, that there's all kinds of people that just call everybody. But once they get to the appointment of this and that, it was not turning into anything, right? So you're spending all this money because you're seeing all these leads or it's people that are actually other investors who want to... Hey, you know, get on my list or whatever. They're yeah, calling them list, yep. and they're searching the same keyword, which goes yep. back to what you were just saying. We Nothing found, wrong with a keyword. We we found in that space to get if if we get rid of the uh, we buy houses stuff, it tended to um, drop a lot of that off and stick towards like the sell house fast, sell house quick, buy inherited house, house series, yeah. like that. Yep. I mean, in the end, we can't get perfect. I think to a large degree, what we do is we help our clients get more leads and waste less money. I mean, they look at us though we're able to, you know, pull the the sword out of the stone type of thing. Um, But the reality is we're working with the Google ads interface. We're just better at it than you are, you know? 
we do it all the time. Uh, you can do it if you want to. I looked at the campaign yesterday. Campaign first, what was it? First campaign at Group One, broad match keywords, website visits were a primary conversion. Uh, search, uh, search, uh, search network and um, display. Yeah, it's. Uh, yeah, and then they wanted me to optimize it. Yeah. I watched, um, That's one of the days where dynamite comes in. Handy. I watched a ton of uh, hip replacement surgeries on YouTube, and I think I've got I've got a really good concept of how it works, and I think I could do it. I actually believe I could do it, but shit, you don't want me actually doing it. And Google Ads is sort of the same way. Like, I kind of have an idea. <laughs> if something goes wrong, oh, just cut the fucking leg off. Just that's it. Cut it off. It's not. There's no replacing it. Um, Google Ads is very similar to that. It's I refer to it as the um, as the greatest way to fleece you of your money ever invented. Um, it really, it's, is. it's incredible that how fast they can take sometimes. Your money. Yeah, when I, I, the first Google Ads campaign I ever ran was like two thousand nine um, for a uh, hybrid limousine company. It was a family business, and um, I had keywords in there like fashion model fashion event <laughs> i had i had celebrity transportation i had all this wacky shit that like i thought it was like interest based <laughs> did not understand the idea of keyword and keyword intent and i put up like i don't know if we did a hundred dollars a day and it was all broad traffic of course and within like seconds of each day of, of putting my stuff up the money was gone it was well it most was of those clicks were probably from india too, because oh, you probably sure. didn't have the U.S. selected. I doubt it. Yeah. Well, yeah, I've done yeah. that. No. My it first campaigns good. were amusing. And they were my money. So it wasn't really that amusing. No. Yeah. My dad's like, this isn't going so well. And I'm like, yeah, I know. It's this Google thing. I heard it's awesome, though. It's this Google <laughs> thing. It actually was a beautiful thing mm -hmm. because, as you mentioned, it transformed everything. It's just... Yep. The trend doesn't seem to be in our favor. Well, Google's doing what's best for them. I mean, they're a company, they have shareholders. We get it. But I think I think they're taking the control that we're all used to as agencies. And now we have to learn how to basically, like you mentioned, performance max. A lot of times you have you have to try to read between the lines because you just don't get the data and you have to do things outside of the campaign even to know what's going on. Like yesterday, we we're having a call with a client that's using Pmax for e-commerce and uh, you know, we're about to increase the budget there, <clears throat> but there's a good portion of the conversions that are branded search categories, not all of them, but well, when we increase the budget, what we want to do is take a snapshot. You can only go back so far, 28 days, take a snapshot of our search categories and just you know, with conversion value, sort by conversion value and determine percentage wise, out of the ones you can see in that screenshot, how many of them were branded then we're going to increase this, wait 30 days, look at that same report and tell, like, is it, did it go from, let's say, 30% branded to now, like, you know, 10% branded or, or whatever the numbers are? Because what will happen a lot of times is you increase your budget, the performance does not get better, it gets worse because you are getting all your brand and now you're getting cold traffic, which you can't convert with that additional spend. And but you I don't, don't mind have any way to know that without looking at the, the information that way. Well, I'll pay you to do it as long as I don't waste any money on it. Yeah. Good luck. So, if I could do that, I wouldn't be talking on this thing. I'd be doing it for myself or every business I own. It'd be crazy. <laughs> awesome. I mean, it's it designed to awesome. it's designed to waste money, and I'm cool with that because it's not wasting money in that sense. Um, you have to come to terms with that. Your billboard doesn't isn't attractive to everyone that drives past it. You know, your ad in the newspaper or TV isn't attractive to everyone, but they do seem to be taking steps that are not productive for either us or the end user, because I don't see most of these things enhancing the end user's number of leads, cost per lead, revenue. Well, the end or user maybe I'm wrong. The you? Yeah, their end user is the person doing the search. You got to remember, we got two different end users here, right? We're thinking mm -hmm. about our end user. Yeah, you're not worried about they're that. They're not the end user. Yeah, the end user is the uh, is the is the searcher. But at the same time, it's they're charging the business. Yeah, but yeah, but their real customer is the traffic. Like you don't have the traffic, nobody's gonna yeah. pay. 
You got to so, milk the baby or milk the cow. Yeah. My milk the baby. Can you milk the baby? <laughs> no, I did in there. <laughs> What's on your laptop? Yeah. <laughs> What's on your laptop? The FBI will be there shortly. Yeah. Um, my, uh, you know, you nailed something earlier about shareholder and you got they have fiduciary responsibilities. I wonder if they're being short sighted with some of the things that they're making to drive short term profits for long term. Um, the word or do they even give a shit because they have so many customers and it's so such a mill that it doesn't matter i don't really know but i wonder at times if they actually know based on the fact that i don't talk to very many people i've never talked to very many people at google especially in the last three to four years that really seem to know what we deal with and the, the advice that they give is so counter like i know people that know google and then there's the advice you get from Google. Or you know people that know AdWords like us. And then there's advice you get from Google and they seem completely counterintuitive. I don't go to my mechanic and he tells me to pour water where the oil should go. So it seems very odd to me that the advice now, understandably, this is a very different type of engine. I don't know what the answer is. It just seems odd to me that the improvements don't seem to benefit and I wonder if eventually you kill the goose that lays the golden egg if you just keep making it worse. You know, it might happen though, <clears throat> reframing the whole idea of Google, right? So we're used to the old way where you can dictate what you want. Pretty soon you're going to have to order off a menu that they're going to give you. You can't create a custom meal. And That's once that happens, one. what choice do you have, right? Like you're, you want to play the game or you don't? I don't think Bing is going to be. Go board. Yeah. It's going to be billboards. And at the end of the day, it's going to make our jobs easier, but the client's life worse because they're not going to make the money and it'll be less for us to control. AI already does a lot of it. I mean, there's still a lot of work that you got to do. And even more now with AI, you got to read between the lines, like I said. But I mean, at that point, it's going to be like, we know better than you. Sit back and give me your money and we'll, we'll do this. Like, that's what I feel like what they're getting to. I think the problem that I have is I deal with it from a software data perspective. and from my perspective as a data tool it's like every upgrade makes it worse of a tool <laughs> from my perspective is wanting to understand what's happening and how to improve on it like software is supposed to improve over time your visibility to things is supposed to improve and every upgrade makes it worse from my perspective and I'm obviously not seeing it from their perspective I have a difficult time seeing it from the advertisers perspective how it makes it better. I see how it makes it easier to create campaigns, but not better. 100%. I'm with you. We're going to end there. Our uh, our Google gripe session is over. We'll I'm call, sorry. I didn't we'll call it the Google gripe session. Um, match types and stuff. Awesome. All right. Um, need anything? Links below. And I'm going to stop the recording.